Before the video starts, I'd like to say this is a biased opinion, and if this somehow makes its way to our favorite exploding bald man, I would like to sincerely thank you. You're a big part of the reason I can call myself a professional, since for getting my first gig, I heavily used this program. Now let's start with the review shenanigans. Many, many years ago, I hope this is recording, because I am standing far away. Nevertheless, many years ago, I had a dream of making stuff with a pen. And tis the time that I found this art school. Alright, now for real. I'm here because I have used this art school for a few years now. I think it's two or three. I don't know. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. But nevertheless, I would like to say a few words about it. Because I'm very sure that a lot of, you know, beginning artists, artists that are in the beginning, beginning. Yes, that's what I said. They have the thought of getting this art school program for themselves. So strap in for a probably longer video. Because today I'll be covering what is it that you will learn in this art school, how, you know, well is it done, is it good in my opinion, and whatever I can think of else. I will cut the video in a few segments, at least 10, because there are 10 different segments in Mark Brunet's art school. So I'd like to go over every single one and just generally speak about it. So let's not talk around the hot topic but about the hot topic. Let's start with term one. Oh, but before I start, this is not an objective review. I am very biased. And if you're looking for an objective buy or no buy review, this is probably not it. This is just me getting my opinion out there because there is nothing else to do today for me. Alrighty, let's start. Term one. In that term, you will learn stuff like Photoshop for, you know, digital production, figure drawing, visual communication, and perspective. This is the term that you will be, you know, using quite a lot when you have absolutely no idea about Photoshop, about what you do when you're a digital artist. If you're at the very beginning, like at step zero, so to say, which is pretty damn good if you ask me, because I'm not gonna lie, most like physical art schools or illustration schools that you have to go and physically be there or whatever they they need you to understand photoshop before you even go if you don't know what photoshop is if you haven't drawn for two years before you can't even go there and i think it's very much overlooked that some people that want to get into digital drawing have just no idea what Photoshop even is. And to its defense, Photoshop is pretty damn complex. I mean, did you know that in Photoshop you can basically make animations? And that in Photoshop there's a 3D tool just integrated and waiting to be used? Fact is, it's always better to have more information about the thing that you're using actively than less. And having a little crash course can never be wrong. Maybe you will learn something, maybe you will learn nothing and will just have refreshed your memories of what Photoshop can do. Now, aside from the Photoshop tutorial that you'll get in term one, you will also get the absolute basic fundamentals. The step where everybody should start. And the step that everybody has to improve every time and always. As a professional, I need to improve that. As a professional of 20 years, somebody at Riot Games Studios needs to improve that. And this term makes that pretty clear, I think, which is definitely another plus point. Furthermore, you will learn about simplification and all the other stuff that helps you be a better artist. And with that, let's move on to term two and three. I take them into one thing because I think they are just connected so much that it's just, you know, the only right choice. In term two and three, you will learn again about Photoshop and the essential tools like vector tools, you know, stuff that 
like a graphic designer or a logo designer will use a lot, along with advanced perspective and even more visual communication stuff. Now what is new in these two terms is that you will have anatomy lessons as well as 3D tool lessons. What I mean with that is, well, pretty simple. In anatomy, you will learn anatomy. It's pretty straightforward, but also extremely important. So much so that you will even have anatomy lessons in term four that makes three terms of pure anatomy. With the 3D tool, I mean ZBrush. It's a free software and it's very good to be able to use in your designs. Now it's been a while since I was at term 3 and I'm not gonna lie, I can't remember that much about the ZBrush tutorial. Mainly because I use Blender, but the gist of it is if you have the opportunity to learn a little bit of 3D tools to just map out your drawings, get a, get a, get a nice perspective, just have nice things for yourself while drawing that, that make it a shit ton easier, do it. It's worth everything. At the end of term three, you will also use your anatomy knowledge that you have gathered over two terms and start drawing clothed figures. Let's move on to term four. In term four, you will have, as I said, anatomy lessons, as well as you will learn color theory and light theory. In my opinion, I think the color and light theory should be a little longer but you will, you will know why I am not the biggest fan of how it is split up as a little spoiler, because there's a term after term four where you still have color and light theory. But anyway, I'll come to that when we'll come to that. You have anatomy, light theory, color theory, and you will learn about film and game production pipelines and basically just a big overview around everything. Pretty basic, but very informative. Now we will move on to term 5, we're already at the half time. And during this half time show, you will learn what character design is. You will learn how to design a character, and again you will have some ZBrush lessons, where I cannot relate to Blender Boys for the win, as well as some animal and creature design drawing tutorial stuff. I think term 5 is pretty self-explanatory if, you know, you know what comes in term 5, character design, sculpting figures in ZBrush, and creature design. The only nitpick that I have is I think term 5 could be a little longer and more elaborated, especially on the character design side, since it is the thing that I think by far most of the people want to do as a profession that go into like, you know, illustration, concept art and stuff. I think it would be beneficial if you could lean a little more into that. But it's also not like that there's anything missing. You have it all, you just have to draw it yourself. Let's move on with term 6. And here's a little bit of a bigger nitpick for me. Because in term 6 you will have color and light theory too. Basically the advanced version of term 4. Which is good, it's stuff that you definitely need to learn and is hard to learn without proper material, but I would have liked to see this color theory be in term 5, just so the stuff that I have learned in term 4 was still fresh. Now, I knew my way around colors and light pretty well, so I didn't have that much of a problem. I can see that some people have to switch between 4 and 6, I mean term 4 and 6, to get maybe stuff that they've missed that they don't remember to better incorporate it in term 6. It's obviously not a huge deal, but what kind of review would this be if there was not just one thing that's slightly negative? Now aside from color and light theory, in term 6 you will also have composition and storytelling, which is super important. I would have that like for three terms straight. It's one of the most important skills you can have or you can learn. And you also will learn about mech design, which is absolutely fair to have like a little chapter for itself instead of being in character design, because mech design is it's just something else. And in today's day and age, there's so much with mech stuff 
there's just, you know, a pretty big market for it. Now we're getting to turn 7, and in turn 7, the shit is about to hit the fan. In turn 7, you will learn how to actually, you know, sit down, learn how to streamline your learning process, which is very nice for people that have not much time. You will learn about materials, how they behave, how shiny they are, what's the physics of them, you know, how to make it seem that a material is heavy or that it is light. You name it, you will learn it. And where the shit is about to hit the van in term 7 is your personal project. Seven terms in, you will make something of your own, completely of your own. But you will still be guided through the process of making it, which is absolutely fantastic. Because I have had a mentor that has told me one thing, and never mind, he told me a lot of things, but one thing stuck with me. Not just that, but you know what I mean. He told me, if you want to draw something, draw something you like. Draw something you care about, something you love, something you find cool. Because if you do that, you will always try harder. And not just that, because you know it already, because you find it is cool, you will also look at it differently. You will know the intricacies, the little details that other people just don't realize that they're there. And because of that, your drawing, your design, everything will just come out better. But anyway, let's not head off topic. Let's let's go to term 8. In term 8, environment design comes in. Very cool, very well explained. And also, I think it's a very good idea to have character design, you know, basic composition, storytelling stuff before environment. En environment design. God damn. I thought I had a stroke or something. The fact that you have environment design after all of that is so well done because with the environment and how a character interacts with the environment can tell a lot. And you can only make use of that if you know all the prior stuff to that. Now with environment design done, you will also have prop design, which kind of links into the character environment design trope. It's kind of like the avatar between them. You can use props to further enhance your character in the environment or other way around. So in terms of how you learn in this program, it's paced very nicely in, you know, good steps. Obviously, you will also work on your personal project, hopefully make an environment for it. Because if you don't, then you will be haunted by explosions every week. Going to term 9, you will have something called matte painting classes. It's a method where you use painting techniques and actual photos to photo bash, paint and whatever to make a coherent picture in a very fast way that's super detailed. A lot of people want to start out with that, but it's very good that it's in term 9, so basically at the end. Because first of all, it's pretty hard. You need to understand a lot of things to even do it correctly. And, you know, so it looks pretty good. And additionally, if you do the matte painting and you have no idea about drawing, you will never get better at drawing. Matte painting is super useful and it's very fast in terms of, you know, if you have to draw it or matte paint it. But it will not help you enhance your drawings. Along with the matte painting, you will also have some time for your personal project, be guided through the final stages, and you will have a little introduction to, you know, graphic design. Stuff like logos and what's typography, just something like that. It can help you, it must not help you, it's just a nice to have. And now, last but not least, Term 10. In Term 10, you basically have a pretty big digital illustration where you will be walked through, where Mark will tell you what he thinks about it, what he does, all of that, in pretty much real time. It can be very helpful, but you will have to sit through it and actually observe what is done and apply it yourself. But I think that is to be expected if you already have done nine terms over the course of probably a year. 
like, or most of the time, two years, something like that. It's a nice ending to give you a little push to make something nice, something big, to inspire you. Now, I know there are, like, bonuses. I have no idea about the bonuses. I have not seen them, I have not done them, I have no idea if they even exist. All I can say to this art school is that it's pretty good. Obviously, the stuff that you learn is very dense. I'm not sure how much video material there is, but there's obviously a lot of video material and you will have to sit through it on your own and you will have to be patient about it. But if you can do that, this art school will definitely improve your skills. I can't say by how much. I can't say it is a direct way into a job as an artist, but I can say that it will definitely improve your understanding of art and how to draw, as well as give you some insights about the industry and even teach you some stuff about 3D, which is used a lot in the industry, I can tell you that. For the absolute last thing that I want to discuss, the thing that I want to present to you before I go, the thing that makes this art school a 11 out of 10, that is the price. Imagine you are a poor, starving artist. You have nothing. And then you want to go to art school. There is it, the sign. Art school, come here now. Only pay 5,000 bucks every month for two years. Sounds like an absolute steal. Hell, if I could pay 60 to 100 grand and have exactly the same stuff taught to me in person, well, why wouldn't I do it? I mean, I'm from Switzerland. We're basically rich here all day, every day. But if you're not a super rich guy that doesn't care about anything in the world except for his chocolate and his pocket watches like me, then you will be very happy because this art school comes in at a whopping $400. Not monthly, not yearly. A one-time payment of 400 bucks. I know, it can seem like a lot for, you know, a digital product, whatever, but everything that you need to learn is in there. There is so much content in there, it's just very dense and you will have to do it yourself. You have to watch it yourself and observe what is done, hear what is said. Obviously, nobody is there to teach it to you in person, which can be a great drawback. Because, you know, getting feedback and everything from a mentor can be extremely valuable. And if you think without this mentoring and feedback from a professional, you cannot do it. Not ever, because, I don't know, you just say you can't do it. Then worry not, because this man got your back. There is a upgraded version of the art school on the same site that I think it's called Feedback Upgrade or Mentoring Upgrade or whatever. It's definitely pricier. I think it's like 2,500 bucks, maybe. I'm completely talking out of my ass. I have no idea how much it pays. I will have, I will have it on the screen right now. Maybe I'm right. But what I want to say with that is it is very pricey and not a lot of people can afford that at least in the beginning of their art journey. But that is still like what? 30 to 50 times less than you would pay when you go to a normal in quote unquote stuff art school and you even get the mentoring. All in all, I really have to say this art school is a total banger. Obviously, there is a lot that you can learn more. No art program, no art school will teach you everything. There are those that are a little, you know, more intricate, and there are those that are a little less intricate. But for the price of a whopping 400 bucks, you cannot say that this art school is not worth every single penny, especially if you are starting out. Because, come on, man, if you're starting out and you want to go to, like, regular art school and spend 60 to 100 thousand dollars, on that art school, you can also pay 500 bucks to see if you even like it. Now, I want to make clear, this is like not an ad or anything. 
I think this digital art school for artists from Mark Renee, it's very nice, it's well curated, everything that needs to be there is there, and the price is, well, at the moment it is unbeaten, I think. I think there is nothing where you get more bang for your buck. And with these happy notes, I would very much like to say goodbye and happy drawing. Also, happy Inktober. I'm not posting every single Inktober thing, you know, separately, but I'm doing them. And I hope you're doing them. Because if you're not, you disappointed me right now. I'm very disappointed. Happy drawing. Goodbye.